Hello and welcome to this video on activated carbon. It is sometimes called activated charcoal and is a brewer's tool. It functions as a filter and fining agent. Activated carbon is increasingly a fad diet item with bogus health claims attached. For the purposes of this video, it will just be called activated carbon. Activated carbon comes in three major forms for brewing, a filter cartridge, granules and powder. The cartridges are very similar to water purification systems. The granules or pellets and powder work much more like tea leaves but in reverse. Activated carbon works as a filter and fining agent by removing impurities. It does so due to a bit of chemistry and a reaction gradient. Activated carbon is used as a purification and refining tool, in particular with distilled products. It also works as a water filtering agent for brewing. Activated charcoal is made by creating regular charcoal. This can be naturally occurring sources such as peat, wood and similar organic materials. This is heated and dried to evaporate the volatile products, leaving behind near pure carbon. The carbon is activated by heating it to around 900 degrees centigrade with steam. This forces the formation of air pockets and excitation of the molecules in the charcoal. Heating with steam further removes some of the impurities, as the excitement causes them to transition into a gas and rise. This also causes most of the surface pores and inner cavities needed for functionality as the gas tries to escape the charcoal. Some methods for this also use a chemical procedure and then apply heat. As the charcoal cools, it does not close up, but leaves the pores and parts of its structure which are still chemically excited, open to the environment. Activated carbon works by having a very large surface area relative to its size. This surface area is covered with the microscopic pores which catch and interact with other molecules. This leads to adsorption. Adsorption is distinct from absorption. Adsorption is the process of the molecules binding to the activated charcoal surface. The pores on the activated carbon come in three ranges one of less than 10 angstroms, one of up to 1,000 angstroms, and those that are more than 1,000 angstroms. The angstrom is a unit of measurement that equals 0.1 of a nanometer. The activated carbon adsorbs effectively because it has a large surface area, pores, and attractive forces which draw in reactive compounds and outcompete other attractive and repulsing forces. The different activated carbon products have the three pore sizes in varying ratios, concentrations, and density due to the product design. Typically, activated carbon properties are measured in two formats, one being the IID number, which is the result of a test done to estimate the surface area of the activated carbon. This measures the iodine absorption the second is the surface area, which is the amount of surface area available for adsorption, given a specific mass of carbon. Most of the compounds you want to remove from alcohol are chemically volatile. This is why the activated carbon works. They interact with the attractive forces and the carbon and become trapped. Let's take a look at water first. Chlorine is a common element used in water purification. There are various forms of chlorine that are used, but one of the more common is chloramines. They are part of a volatile group of chemicals and will evaporate off from the water's surface if left in an open container. If, for instance, you either did not have adequate storage or time to do this, activated charcoal would work. The basic structure of activated carbon is similar to graphite. The graphite crystals are layers of fused hexagons held by weak van der Waals forces. In between the layers, they are held together by carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds. 
These are electron bond. Carbon is an element with a negative 4 charges. This means it needs to get 4 electrons, or lose 4 to become stable. But most elements are selfish, and so only want to grab electrons from somewhere else. When filtering, at first the carbon is bound to other carbon molecules, but it will happily grab electrons from the compounds that get stuck in the pores. Chlorine, for example, has negative one electrons in its shell. This means that it is drawn into what seems like a whole bunch of carbon molecules offering one of their four electrons that they have. But in fact, the carbon grabs the chlorine's electron. On an industrial scale, this is done by running the water over a bed of activated carbon and allowing it to bind. This is coupled with a very slow flow rate to provide the best opportunity for that binding to occur. When you are looking to use activated carbon with brewing, it is both easier and harder. It is not a selective filter. It is not even a preferable filter like egg whites. Activated carbon will affect anything with a charge as long as it can get within the pores on the surface. Take fusel alcohols for instance. It will also remove other undesirable items such as aldehydes, aminos and fusel oils. Similarly, it may remove desirable elements. This is one reason the inside of a wine, whiskey and scotch barrel is charred. The limited surface area ensures that it removes mostly unwanted products. When trying to purify your own product, this is done by putting the distillate or wash through a filter, similar to that used with water filter jugs or inline water filter systems. This is attached to your vessel with the filter set up below the spigot. This is generally also below the bottom of the vessel and waits several hours to days for it to filter. This is because of the volume and the process. In the case of beer or similar, you will find it fouls the filter quickly. Products that have been distilled or clarified are going to work better as they have fewer components and those that remain are smaller. In practice, you have more flexibility in using activated carbon with spirits. The quick and dirty solution is to add one part carbon by weight to ten parts spirit by weight. Combine these in a large glass vessel and stir vigorously. Stir again each day for a week. This will ensure the activated carbon and liquid make maximum contact. The carbon will not readily let go of the things it has caught and so stirring just helps it to make contact on all surfaces. More surface contact means, at least in theory, more filtration. The alternative to this is specifically made filter systems that work with granular activated carbon. They are like the filter cartridges, but you pack them yourself with a more open material. These granules are similar in size to rice or barley, and some go down to the size of a coarse flour. There is enough room for some liquid to move freely in this, but the rest soaks the carbon before it passes through. The filters use various designs, but commonly they go back and forth to create a longer filter, but use less linear length. The efficacy of your filter, the lifetime of it, and how much gets bound by the carbon depend on a number of factors. Particularly important are temperature and pH. Others that you have less control over include pore size, the distribution of the pores, the source of the carbon, and the manufacturing process. As a general rule, large organic molecules are absorbed better than smaller ones, as they outcompete. Adsorption tends to increase as pH and temperature decrease. This is because the hydrogen ions are made more reactive in extreme pH values. This is countered by the change in temperature, which slows down reactions. This means that you can shift the gradient toward favoring filtration by having extreme pH values and a cool location in which you filter. If you are using distilled products, pH is not so easily modified. 
This can also be useful if you are trying to remove contaminants. Contaminants are removed more effectively if they are in contact with the activated charcoal for a longer time. Reducing flow rate through the charcoal filter will improve filtration. In this case, less volume is more filtration as it is not forced along by pressure in the filter or by back pressure from the source. Activated carbon is not effective at removing ethanol, methanol, strong acids and alkali products. They tend to create a polarity which competes with the carbon and will in fact carry material out of the filter. Filtering will have an effect on taste and colour. For this reason, it is used for cleaning vodka and moonshine in particular. If you have a brew that is on the edge of being undrinkable and you really want to save it, activated carbon is an option. To briefly debunk the health claims, Gwyneth Paltrow began this by making claims to its efficacy in 2014. This should immediately make you question the validity. Ignoring that, activated carbon is biologically implausible for the reasons they give. In an emergency situation, it can be used in large quantities to bind with toxic substances which will then be passed on as feces. Particular examples are poisoning. This is also what will happen to any beneficial nutrition in food containing activated carbon. There is no differentiation in the GI tract between things that it's meant to remove and what it should not be removing. And this is why adding activated carbon to perfectly good coffee is a waste. It prevents your body from absorbing the caffeine, which is the desirable element in coffee. It also has no effect on anything that is already circulating in your blood, and it will not be drawn out by the activated carbon. Activated carbon is a good option if you have a brew with limited flavour that you want to strip out. Strong flavour that will survive filtration, and if your brew or wash is not dense. Dense, viscous or sugar rich liquid will foul activated carbon very quickly. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it useful, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.